everyone and welcome to um, the Art Magical. Uh, great to have you on. Um, and uh, I first became interested in your work because, um, well, I love Irish mythology and I also saw your wonderful progressive image of Lou with a progress pride flag, uh, which I thought was awesome. So uh, thanks again for coming on. Uh, and thank you, Yvonne. And um, that, that, um, that image you're talking about, hang on. I'll show it up just, you know. Um, so I'd like to explain what's going on in some of that drawing. I've done it on the internet and stuff before. Is that okay, Yvonne? Is yeah, it sure, yeah, lovely. So it's like, this This is the drawing, okay? So I don't know, the light mightn't be. Yeah, that's pretty good. Best, okay? I so what's going on in that drawing is, um, okay, so that's the, Leofal on, on the Hill of Tara, ah. which in the Hill of Tara in Ireland is like this very ceremonial hill and is linked into all our most ancient uh, manuscripts in our Irish mythology. So uh, on the Hill of Tara, um, you, you'd have a lot of tourists and, uh, and stuff like that. And the big thing with the, the Leofal stone, it, it means the, the stone of destiny. So it would be like, um, you know who would become kind of leader would would uh, the stone would sing um in our mythology if, um, to, to see who would kind of lead whatever mm. so um what we had for 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 the last while is um so there's always been stuff up in tara now now any when i say this and someone watches this um there'll be the usual crap and comments um because that's what i got on instagram and like I wasn't surprised, but it was so full on. Um, mm. So you have you have a very big mix. You have you've you've one person who goes that I'm lying that uh, the right wing isn't uh, linked in with anything, and Lou is looking at me, and Lou knows the truth. Okay, Lou Love Father. Okay, sorry. So yes, the drawing is of Lou Love Father. I should have mentioned yeah. that actually. Yeah. So what was happening on the Hill of Tara was. Um, Okay, I'm going to talk about one group in particular. There was different groups, but my main, because I am questioned so much about this, my, the main one is a right-wing party. Um, See, so you know when you're kind of going, <laughs> promoting them by saying the name, but we have two main right-wing parties, and I mean very right-wing parties in, in the country, and they're the Freedom Party and the National Party. So um, one of them would say, okay, went up onto the Hill of Tara, given a speech. So on the Hill of Tara, now a lot of them would be very fundamental Christian, um, um, but the Hill of Tara, like, like most places, as you know, uh, stuck a big fucking St. Patrick statue, massive thing mm -hmm. up on the Leofold. And it's, but it's yeah. like, they did that years ago. Yeah. I actually have a lovely book of, um, yeah, I know it could be jumping subjects. I'll, hang on, no, I have to say this, but the same. So, you know, we always think, uh, when we think of Irish history, we think of um, 1916 and them all being like, you know, good Roman Catholics and all this, mm. but they weren't. Um, no, I mean, the Celtic Twilight was in full swing with... Uh, Absolutely, you know, Yates, yes. Well, Yates was a bit right-wing, it turns out, unfortunately. I, yeah, I know, but I, I suppose we shouldn't put anybody on a pedestal, you know, but yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. The, now, again, I, I, I'm a big fan of the writer Ella Young, um, and they were openly pagan. And I, and I have her autobiography, it's a, it's a lovely book. And um, they write when they're up on Tara, no, like you're talking like, like pre-1916, so I'll just say 1910, you know, a bit mm. before. And um, they're in the car and they were saying, let's blow up the statue of St. Patrick, you know, because they put St. Patrick up on this hill, you know, you have the Mount of Hostages, you have the Leofall, and it's the whole like, the, the mythology is so linked in there as a, as a ceremonial yeah, place. It's a pagan place, and crying out loud. Yes, yeah. a sacred place. Like, I, honestly, I've been, I've been there and I've, I've met people who've come straight from the airport up to the Hill of Tara. Like, oh, I always wanted to go to the Hill of Tara. Yeah. So, um, geez, I'm jumping all over the place here, Yvonne. But anyway, so... That's great. The, uh, sorry, Ella Young was with um, a couple other characters. I can't think. There was Maud gone. Yeah. There was there was a few others anyway in the car who were involved in 1916 and they're saying let's blow up the statue of St. Patrick and then they're like you know something the whole thing in the story they're just saying basically the gist of the story is like uh, if we blow up the statue of St. Patrick they'll only build a bigger one you know so that was it okay right um but anyway I'm so off point right so anyway let's go back to, to present day so there's always been stuff on the hill of Tara like so 
years ago, maybe in the, no, no, it's not the 90s, probably um, the 2000s sometimes, you you this guy, um, I'm not saying names, or you'd have them all after me, but it, it's like the, the, a, a right-wing uh, druid type, he'd be croning tourists saying, you're no the king or the queen of Tara. And you've always had this, um, just I, I think people trying to take ownership of it and yeah. with, uh, with some with, with dodgy politics. But anyway, to go back to the drawing, right? I, I suppose I'm trying to maybe give a bit of a foundation. Yeah, no, it's, it's great. It's, it's keep it up. So, okay, <laughs> so the, okay. So this, anyway, um, so this right-wing party were up giving their speech on the hill, okay? And it just became this whole, um, it just became like this, like a, a speaker's corner for anything. And it was just, to me, it was getting more dodgy. So anyway, this group, they're, they're very um, homophobic, um, anti-immigration, what you expect of the right wing, you know? Oh yeah, um, it goes with the territory, so, unfortunately. Yeah, and that's it. And we're all, it, it, it's terrible when it becomes so um, kind of hyper normal, you know, that this, this is the usual and, and it's like, yeah. but it's obviously not acceptable. Um, so uh, the drawing is, they would always, so you see on their websites and they would get, they, they'd sell pictures of um, Padraig Pierce and all that, they'd call each other kind of patriots and, and it's all this really like, what? Um, so I said, okay, they, one of the, in one of the speeches anyway, they, there was a whole thing about in um, sex education in, in Irish schools coming in and that they would cover um, basically, uh, you know, whatever, um, trans, whatever, okay, I, I don't know, I can't even remember now offhand, okay, so LGBT that's the general, general, yeah, yeah, so this is what their issue was about, so they're always uh, stealing or history and reclaiming mm. it. So I said, well, it's my turn. So I had blue law father and I have them on, on, on a horse by the Leo Fall with our flag. Now people went ballistic. Like, they, like the, 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 the comments on, on Instagram was ridiculous and on Facebook. Mm. And I eventually was just like, and I'm calm, and eventually I said, right, internet off. And I just left it for a couple of days. And like, it has gone on and on and on. Wow. But the best thing about this is I've had um, emails from teenagers saying that, wow, it felt them it, like that they felt really rooted and that they felt that it was kind of more of a safe place, even though all this was going on. Yeah. And to me, it's like, well, Grant, I'll take the abuse then. You know what I mean? That, that means the world to me. Like, yeah. And then eventually uh, during the year, I suppose it's kind of showing off, but in Dublin, it, it went up in Dublin Castle, this oh, uh, drawing, but Dublin, Dublin Castle framed during the year. And to me, you couldn't beat it, like, you know what I mean? And it's just, it was a very much, it was a drawing I'd done anyway for a book that I'd done before called Lou, Lou Nabua with, with two other writers, uh, Carl Sharkey and Sean O'Gain, and uh, it's in Irish and in English. And it was really like such a quick thing of like, well, I'll add a flag. And uh, to be honest, I, I'm... I'm very proud of it now, you know. So you should um, be. So I, I think it's absolutely. I mean, like that was that was your first piece that I saw, um, and I think I saw the the second post you did of it, and then um, I went and which had mostly positive comments on it, and then I went back and looked yeah. at the um, the one which got all the flack, and um, you know, I mean, I get flack for, or well, I used to get a lot of flack for being talking about inclusive wicker. Um, mm -hmm. And so I can completely relate to that. Um, it, things have shifted and that's really good. Um, I think yeah. that, you know, obviously we are seeing a massive right wing resurgence right now. Um, we're having a scary moment in Canada because Ottawa is currently under siege from right wing truckers, which is really scary. It is, yes, it's frightening, yeah. It really is, yeah. <clears throat> like, it's gone on for three weeks now and it's just not good. Um, There's a protest there today. I saw that on the internet before I came on. Yeah, there's also a like, I don't know what time as well, which is good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, a counter protest is what I meant. Yeah, to say. yes, I thought that's what you meant. Yeah. Yeah. Right. There we go. Change the lighting a bit. Um, I hope that's worse. Let me do it again. <laughs> um, and now it looks too dark. That's better. Right. Um, yeah, I, I just think, and and it's there's this right wing resurgence and they're all doing the same themes and and now we've got anti-vaxxers in the mix as well so yeah and, and it's like 
the the whole co sorry am I, I just interrupted you I'm going sorry continue oh here. cheers um yeah so I mean I think the um you know the the holding of safe space and the creating of art that speaks to inclusion and um uh, and you know reclaiming the mythology um is really really important so you know thank you so much for doing that and um, you know, similarly, uh, Nick Phillips, who I did another into one of these interviews with, um, did a painting of me as Odin um, with the Progress Pride, Pride flag in the background. So, um, uh, and we explicitly made it like you holding a handful of runes that say LGBTQIA and oh. has Black Lives Matter on his shirt. So, um, don't know if I don't know that if Nick's got any pushback for that, but. Uh, um anyway it's great it's a great idea a great picture so um yeah and i love your picture i think you know and um i'm sure lou would appreciate it and uh you know he is the one of he is the you know lou of the skillful hand so yeah yeah well I can see where i live is just like um <clears throat> so where i live in, in mythology so okay so the windows so directly towards me is Tory Island where Lou would have been born and then um here to the left would be Dun Louis so it would be like the, the kingdom the fort of, of Lou so oh, it's, wow. it's, it's all around this area here in uh, this area is called Clough Neely which is um Clough is the stone um Clough, Clough Cian Neely so it's like Cian McAneely which would have been Lou Lawfather's father oh, and, right. uh, yeah. So I should explain this, but sorry, I, this happened just yesterday. I got a cyst in, in um, if this has ever happened to you, I, I have never had it inside my uh, oh. hand. And um, I, I don't know, like I haven't even called it. I, I have tightened this just because when I bend it down too much, it, it goes. Have you ever got that? No, no I haven't. But I've had similar in other parts of my body and it's ouchy. Yeah. So Can I, it's, it's not sore, it's just a bit lucky. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah. Um, sorry, just in case, you no know, worries. someone's waving around and going, what happened to you? Um, yes. but, well, as, um, long you, as long as you haven't turned into um, Nodens. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <That would be bad. laughs> uh, it's really interesting. I used to live near a, uh, a burial mound um, that was called uh, Ludbury. So, oh. uh, and that's near Bristol. Uh, so there's a lot of Lou place names in England. Uh, well. what, what, you say, what, what would it be translated like? Um, what would it actually mean? Well, the bury part must have been added by the Saxons. Um, but it oh, would be okay. like, you know, Luke's mound, I guess. Fantastic. Wow. Because yeah. did you ever hear the one, um, I've said this loads of times, no, okay, let's go back to the drawing again. So, you know, I don't know, do you uh, recognize the shield? Shlau, uh, here is Slau, can't say it in Welsh, Slau Slau Gifis in Welsh. Oh. Is the, well, uh, and it means Lou of the skillful hand in Welsh as well. That's fantastic. I, I've never heard of that. Now, I'm going to have to Google that uh, after we uh, finish chatting. I Because did you ever hear I have the battery C shield on that? that was I thought it was the battery C shield. Yeah. No, I put that in for a reason. <clears throat> so you think, all oh, right, this is all Irish. But um, did you ever hear the one uh, that London was linked to Lou? No, it's yes. only a... Well, it was Lucan, yeah, and, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, Lyon in France. And yeah. there's this, and you're just going, wow, like, you know, it's it's incredible, like, you know. Yep, um, branches everywhere. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So here, again, it's rounded here, and the, the whole story of, of Lou being born here and stuff. But just to go back, um, I'm awful at rambling, uh, Yvonne, but to go back to what you were saying about the rise of the right. So uh, when I was growing up, uh, in the 70s and 80s, it was like there wasn't much. So it was like, <clears throat> so in I, I grew up in Cork, mm. which is the very southern part of the country. And uh, there was like a small skinhead gang um, who had, um, they had a, a, a leader who would have been, he was probably an old man to, to people then, but he's probably in his 30s, mid 30s. And um, I won't say his, say his name, and uh, used to dress in an SS uniform. Oh. Um, a, uh, English, but, you know, Irish parents or something. Mm. And they were the kind of um, the, the, the Nazis, the, the, the fascists. And then there were always these small things, but it was like, that was like kind of mid 80s and they just 
some of those young fellas, they, they, they grew up and that was it. Mm. And I got to know the leader of them actually some years later. Um, but, um, <clears throat> and, you know, anyway, um, so uh, it was never like, I'm not, it always existed. And then you'd have had stuff in Dublin, like, um, again, uh, skinhead stuff like Celtic Dawn, different right wing bands and things like that very small, would have never played on the regular scene in Dublin because they would have known what would have happened. Yeah, and, people uh, knew to, to keep yes. it out. <laughs> because that whole punk scene, was, it was, which I was very involved with years ago, was, was very left and was very anti-fascist. Yeah. Um, but now I find in the last, as, as we've probably all seen, um, yeah, even pre-COVID, but now since COVID as well, it, it's just the rise is, is something else. And then... Yeah. The right wing here, as I've as I've seen uh, on media, ha, like in other countries, has taken it on of like, you know, it's it's again, it's like jumping on the bad wing to bring in people. And, and it's 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 shocking the, the the behavior and what what has happened. Now, in saying that, I should say something positive rather than being very kind of negative about it. But I do think it's declining. I can only speak of Ireland. I think initially they had that they had big groups with them because everyone was angry of like hey you know we're, we're, this is a lockdown and this is whatever but I think it's declining as time has went on you know mm. and people probably have kind of got more of a footing on things and of course so. you, you'll always have that um, crowd but yeah I just thought I'd mention that of just of what's happening in Ireland I suppose mm. you know so. yeah I mean I think um, I, mean, I think the, the a lot of the issue is people who are centrist going Oh, it's just a few bad apples. It's like, no, if you if you've got a Nazi, uh, if you've got a Nazi who is a loud uh, gathering, it's now a Nazi gathering, as a friend yeah. of mine said to me the other day. Um, Absolutely. And uh, um, yeah, so you know, I think I think it has to be zero tolerance for fascism because mm -hmm. it's the it's the Karl Popper thing. You know, the one thing the tolerant cannot tolerate is the intolerant. Yeah, yeah. So that's. It's that's totally true. So, like, it is. It's a small factions, like, but at the same time, that doesn't say, "Ah, should we like, ignore it?" You know. Um, mm. <clears throat> but it's yeah. It's. I find it very frustrating. It's kind of. Um, it's it's accepted of like, I've had conversations with people. I suppose you'd kind of kind of refer to them as kind of more Irish pagans. That it's like. Um, it's sort of like well, you know that's their thing and we have to accept them and you know we'll all hold hands and you know and like we can't all hold hands because they're not allowing everybody else to hold hands that's and it. it's just you're kind of like it's it's I, I think the right wing have done one job successfully in that they've tainted the word anti-fascist and anti-fascist fascism or fascist is seen as a bad thing now anymore like you see it on the internet it's like what the Anytime I've put up something, I, I designed a poster a while back um, for, for a, a gig and um, it was just like a, a kind of more of a female character um, shouting and they, they had the anti-fascist flag, right? And now, I was asked to do this and, um, and fully supported. But the, again, the comments and stuff and you're like, oh yeah, you're turning it into politics and you're like, I'm not turning it into politics. Politics, it's like they're the ones who are turning it into politics. You know yeah. what I mean? I'm just well, saying. I mean, you know, the thing, my argument like, to that is when people say paganism isn't political or spirituality isn't political or whatever, yes, it is. The you know, staying on the fence or staying pretending not to be political is a political choice. Yeah. You know, um, everything is political. The personal is political. The spiritual is political. It's all political. Because political is simply means, you know, how we live together in community. And mm -hmm. there can be no community with fascists. Absolutely. End of. <laughs> there you go. Um, so, yeah, I love that you, uh, you know, I think it's, uh, I'm, like, my heart absolutely sang when I saw the image of Lou with the Progress Pride flag. I was just like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, so that's why I had to contact you and go, this is amazing, woo! <laughs> so, oh, uh, yeah, I just think that's wonderful. And 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 I also really liked um, the fact that your images of women aren't hypersexualized because, you know, like you see these ridiculous images of women with 
with double F boobies and 12 inch waists and ridiculous armor that would never actually work in battle. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously the first two offend me more, but the, as a as a nerd, the third one <laughs> just breaks <laughs> my brain. <laughs> so, but, um, um, so I love oh, yeah, I that. that. No, thank you. Um, <clears throat> because that's something that always got to me is uh, growing up, I would have loved people like Jim Fitzpatrick. I still love Jim Fitzpatrick. <clears throat> so there'd be artists who would normally copy Jim's work sorry, not copy, influenced by Jim's work. And um, it is just, it's just kind of 70s fantasy sex. And it's just like, I could never relate to it. I, I, and I'm not saying, oh, because I'm so cool. <laughs> it just looks shy. You are, though. <laughs> you know, but it, it looks so shy, you know, it didn't, it's yeah. just like, but that, I can't relate to this. Like, I, how do you expect us to relate to this? Like this kind of fantasy. So. Uh, for me, I, I got into a lot of stuff. Um, Sloan, a comic. Do you remember Sloan and the yes. eighty? Yeah, oh, I love uh, two thousand AD. Uh, yeah, yeah, oh, two thousand AD. I should have said. Yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> and uh, Judge Dredd. Um, yeah. So I, <clears throat> I couldn't really afford them. I, I had the odd one, and actually about, God, I'm, I'm, I'm gone off subject again. But I, there was a, a, <clears throat> a record shop in Letterkenny. It's maybe it's an hour away, and. Uh, there's this piles of old comics of 2000 a day, and I was like, <gasps> you know, actually, it's not actually, it's probably about 15. Anyway, anyway, it doesn't matter. So I started flicking through and I bought loads, and I was just picking through all the ones with Slana in it. Um, I love Slana, and the reason I love Slana was now, again, there are some stuff now because I'm <laughs> I know the more that I say it, I'm like, well, there is some odd bit of fantasy stuff in there, they're a bit much, but I just thought it was very, it, it made it very real. Um, <clears throat> and I think the writer Pat Mills really studied. A lot of these characters and yes. link them in. And for me, it, for me as a, as a as a young teenager, it made it very real for me, and I, and I think that was a huge influence um, on stuff like that. Um, and like, I'd love to see more of that, you know, because um, there is far too much of this. Um, it's it's something that always kind of um, that I'm wary, of, and especially when it comes to anything nudity or, or sex, you're kind of like, how do I portray this in a in a in a? Sorry, I don't think that I draw it, and then afterwards I'm going, is this is that kind of seen as sex? And like, there's one in particular. I don't know. Do I actually have it handy? Hang on. But I know two people have said, "Well, Sean, that's sexist." Like, um, hang on, I'll show it to you. You might change your opinion on my art now in a minute. Um, hang on. Or do I? Oh, here it is. Okay. So I, now, again, anytime I've interviewed, I always try and talk about this because, right? So it's Maeve. Okay. Oh, I love that. Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> so yeah. I mean, I said, well, like, it's like a nude not... woman, but it yeah. doesn't mean that it's sexist. It's like yeah. the whole thing of her death, I thought was really, um, you know, she's almost shamed. So we'd say growing yeah. up, we, we would have all loved um, Cucullin and stuff as, as, as kids growing up in school. Yeah. And Cucullin's enemy was Maeve. And um, so then we all hated Maeve that it was like, warmongering and all this sort of stuff and um and then her, how, how she died they say it was a, a slingshot of a hard cheese into the middle of the head killed her so it's kind of really laughable mm. but what it actually was was um Maeve wanted an equality with her husband and he'd won prize bull and you could say well she started a war but she wanted equality with her husband of that they'd be both at a level stand of what yeah. they owned and you're kind of going well, what's wrong with that and yeah. then how she died was she was bathing so that's what i've drawn here it might be hard to see on screen but oh, I see she was the, bathing the pool behind and her, there's yeah. there's two eyes hidden i don't know you might be able to see it there but so someone practiced for three days from was it 10 meters so they could kill her and again she's bathing so that's why i have the sword the shield so she doesn't have any weapons so completely defenseless like yeah and that's the idea behind it but i think i know again i why it is is because of what we're accustomed to it's like so immediately you're going you, you see a nude and you're like here we go like you know yeah, um but look at the so way I do her get body that, is but, i mean like you know i'm looking at her body and i'm going that's a real body yeah you know? um yeah. she's got a little uh, a little belly there um you know it's she's not she's not got inflated boobs and yeah but also a warrior face, right so yeah 
you know, um, I'm a Wiccan, we do nudity, right? So, mm. so I'm like, you know, oh, a real depiction of a real naked body. Yes, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But there's a tarot deck I really like that's, um, I think it's called the Fat Tarot. Um, oh. And somebody's like depicted all of the tarot characters as fat people, which I absolutely love. And obviously there's quite a lot of nudity in that as well. Um, and do they call it you, the fat tarot? Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay, I must have a look for that. Okay. Yeah, well. it's really good. Um, but yeah, like that to me is a beautiful depiction of the human body. Um, oh, there's nothing inherently wrong with nudity, right? It's, yeah. It's the, because what I, like I said, what I object to is the, the, um, the unrealistic uh, body standards, you know? Yeah. Um, of 12 inch waist and double F boobs, which no real woman actually possesses. <laughs> so. I know, and, and of course it leads us all to these, goes without saying, to have various issues. And, yeah, you know. whereas I look at that and I go, you know, that's not my body, but because um, mm. I'm a bit bigger than that, but it's it's a real human body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I hear you. Uh, and it, yeah. it's a, you see, it's kind of, I, I think um, a lot of it, like it is, you see, I know people, it's like kind of, for, for some people, it's fantasy and it's, uh, and stuff. And you're kind of going, this isn't fantasy to me. It's yeah. it's very much, it's mythology. It's, it's very different. Um, yes. Um, but in saying that, it doesn't justify it in fantasy either. Like, it's just, it, it's off-putting, isn't it? Like, uh, as well yeah. as sex has been all the obvious things, you know what I mean? But it's yeah. just, yeah, it's, it's off-putting, you know? Yeah. yeah, I mean, the thing is also that looking at that image, it's like, how do you, how does the viewer respond to that image? Um, and like, if the, if the viewer brings to it that they're seeing her as a sex object, yeah. uh, which would be to me the definition of sexism, um, you know, then they're bringing that to it because it's quite clear the way you've drawn her um, that you're humanizing her and making, and the way you were talking about it, that you're humanizing her and making her a subject in her mm -hmm. own story instead of an object in her own story. So, yeah, yeah. very opposite of sexist in my and, and I think it's, and I should say thank you, Evan. Um, but the, um, I do think, uh, again, going back to mythology and the story, the way it's told, it's like um, another thing that uh, would have been said of Maeve is that she was kind of uh, like a, a harlot an easy woman sort of do you, do you ever notice that when you're reading about Maeve and you're like going where's all this shit about like yeah um, and it's kind of but again we have to remember it's written by monks so oh. they're gonna yeah. body shame and they're gonna you know what I mean it's, it's part of that you know it's part of that, part of that culture, scene, yeah. whatever you want to call it um yeah so it's it's like for me uh um <clears throat> okay so go back to landscape um the other side of me here is a mountain called Muckish. And on top of Muckish, there's a Neolithic cairn called uh, Mask and Maeve, which means Maeve's cairn. Now, unlike the cairn that's in Sligo, which is where they say Maeve was buried, this cairn is one of worship. So here to the right of me, and then not really to the north, so it'd be this way, there's another, and the actual whole hilltop is called Mask and Maeve. Wow. And then you have, um, so th this is the Republic and then we'll just forget borders for a minute, right? So then you have uh, Derry and Tyrone. So then up here you've you've another, it's a mountain basically and, and the meaning means um, it's uh, Maeve's vulva. So now you have oh, wow. Maeve here, you've Maeve yeah. there and you've Maeve here. Then when you go down from that mountain, you have Maeve's huts and it's a whole village, right? So oh, the wow. whole area and then you think like, okay, Maeve's vulva, right? So then you think, and cairns a lot of the time are seen as, as nipples and all this sort of thing. So you think, okay, so all our landscape is the body. Wow. But we, we've always learned in our mythology, we, we no, especially here because we have Lou Lawfather, you know, um, you could say oh, it's very male and stuff, but we're surrounded by Maeve. I know Maeve mm. is kind of, is, is um, no, don't get me wrong, there's a huge appreciation of Maeve. But I think it's just slightly under Lou because Lou was so such a maybe a strong figure. You could say okay, a male figure, but it, they were a very strong figure in 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 mythology. But Maeve, I think there's so much to, to more that we need to learn about Maeve. You know, um, mm. yeah, I mean, I sort of, I you know, um, your knowledge of Irish mythology is far more in depth than mine. Um, 
but I think I sort of see her as a goddess of sovereignty. Yeah. Um, yeah. But they say, like, I've read, I've, I've read that they say that she's a goddess of sovereignty because of on the uh, Hill of Tara that it's like you, you would, the king would drink um, it, like mead and mm. this whole thing of representing May, but it's it's all it, like I, I would compare almost like that in Greek mythology to almost like a Gaia type of figure. Yes. But like again, I know we can't really come, but anyway, you know, it's different, yeah. but maybe a, a similar similar in some respects. Yeah, well, I think I mean the thing is, sovereignty presumably proceed proceeds from the land, and mm -hmm. therefore the goddess of the land is also the goddess of sovereignty. So yes, um, so that makes sense. But yeah, you know, I recall when I visited the Burren, um, you know, you have the the mountains, I think it's the Paps of Anu. Um, they're it's very Yeah. Oh, yes, Kerry's got the Paps of Anu. There, there's, no, a, there's a mountain I, in the Barren. I didn't mean to be a bollocks when I said that, but it just. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. um, uh, yeah, the, it's been a long time since I went to the Barren. I need to mm. fix that because uh, I loved it. Um, but yeah, there's a mountain in the Barren that's, that's two breasts of a goddess. And, um, uh, and you get that in England as well. Like there's the, um, there's a, couple of mounds in Oxfordshire um, which are called um, they were known popularly as um, Mother Dunch's Dugs which um, yeah Julian Cobb I, talks about it yeah I think there's a I think it's a lost reference to a landscape goddess wow and, and do, you, do you know what the what what was the name again sorry did you say um, of the... so it's, it, they actually named them satirically for for Cromwell's mother-in-law and it's um, Mother Dunch's Dugs, but but I'm pretty sure it must have been a reference to a, a land goddess at some point. Wow, wow. I should mention, <laughs> since you mentioned the Paps of Anu, my uncle, though he was 91, he died yesterday. Oh, I'm sorry. go to the Paps of Anu every year, oh, every wow. single year. So I should say, if people kind of are visiting Ireland and stuff, you swear I was getting sponsored by the tourist board, um, that it's a very easy ish walk to go up if, if my uncle was doing it up to maybe the age of 1989 um it's well worth to visit yeah and he would go up every year and do his rounds and, you know, oh so. i love it it's yeah. awesome yeah great guy love it um yeah i told so you i go off subject very easy yeah no, that's, that's well, that, like i said that's <laughs> what makes it a rich and fascinating talk so um, so yeah, obviously, like I love the way you're really steeped in Irish mythology. I think that's amazing. Yes. Um, and the way it's so connected with the landscape, because mm. uh, you know, like here in Canada, it's kind of tricky because um, the landscape is very steeped in Indigenous mythology, but we don't want to we don't want to appropriate their mythology. So, of course. And so it's like, okay, how do we? How do we relate meaningfully to the landscape without being a, being colonizers, basically? So it's kind of tricky, but it's just, it's just wonderful to like look at Ireland and go, um, oh, look, that hill over there is belongs to that deity, and that hill over there belongs to that deity. It's fantastic. Well, to be honest with you, I think that's what actually um, stirred me. Like, um, landscape became a big thing with it. Is, uh, it still is with me, if I'm honest. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, you see, I'm always afraid. Okay, this will sound like a plug, but the thing is, the book won't be out for ages. So I'm working on a book, um, Megalithic Donegal, so it'll be like Ooh. the Megalithic, the northwest of Ireland, and it's all comes into landscape. So it's like um, all our oldest old Irish words, a lot of it has been anglicised, but then when you break down the Irish words, you're actually getting great meaning um, behind a lot of these places, mm. um, and it's kind of opened up like so when I started doing the book this is like I always knew of Mesk and Maeve what I was telling you earlier up here the, the mountain next to me and the other Mesk and Maeve but I never knew that um it's 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 the Spurn Mountains and it's it's actually um Balia, Balia Sal which the, that's modern Irish but that's the one I was saying was the um actually I think the direct translation is looks like Maeve's fault <laughs> rather than Maeve's oh wow um, <laughs> So I, I only found that out recently since, since um, so then it's like, so then I started checking up other place names related to Maeve and th there's so many like, you know, um, <clears throat> but it, again, landscape, that's what it's all about. It, it's all in our landscape and, and reading the landscape and, and what's there. Yeah. Like, you know. like um, 
you know, it's always been really important to me to know the names of the nearby hills. Uh, yeah. And recently visited England again, and I was like, oh, it's so great. I know the name of that hill. I know the name of that hill. I know the name of that hill. <laughs> um, it's not very, not very many hills around, around where I am at the moment. Um, so I'll just, uh, but there's one actually called Chicopee, um, which means like the hill of, it's a particular tree and now I can't remember which tree it is, but anyway, it relates, it's an indigenous word relating to trees. So yeah. it's pretty cool. Can yeah. I ask a question then? Um, so you were saying earlier about, okay, so, you, okay. So you practicing over there on indigenous land. So, you know, when you're kind of, um, holding a space, we'll say, are you, you're inviting in everybody as such? Or how, how does it work? Or is this a stupid question? Uh, no, it's a very good question. And it's something, I mean, I've been here for three years now, nearly four years and um, still working on it. Because mm. um, it takes time to, yeah, you know, one thing I did find was that there was something I was doing that was calling on ancestors and spirits, which I can do in England. And I do it here. And the land goes, no, you don't, not allowed to do that. You stop. So I stopped and um, and I changed it. And um, and then it takes time to actually make yourself known to the spirits. So, and for them to kind of go, oh yeah, you're okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> if they have done that yet, don't know. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it, it really takes time then patience and you know also shouting about indigenous land rights as much as possible which I do um but yeah we one of the things we do is we start every ritual with a land acknowledgement um which acknowledges that we're on the land of the Anishinaabe the Haudenosaunee and the Atawandaron um and expresses a wish uh, for their for them to get more of their land back um and for their languages and cultures to flourish and that's really important to just you know remind ourselves every time that that, that we're in their space um, yeah. and then um i mean a lot of the time i think our rituals are still you know we're still doing european deities and stuff um but with that acknowledgement that we are on their land um and you know i think i think it was appreciated that i changed that ancestors and spirits thing um so um because it's like well whose ancestors mm, mm. um you know because i mean i have no direct ancestors in this space like no you know all of my ancestors come from a very small blob in the um in the southeast of england southwest ish of england mm. so uh, you know i have to be mindful of that as well yeah. So, yeah, it's a work in and, progress. And that's it. But, uh, and like you said, uh, the word there is mindfulness, isn't it? And it's just this, I, I think um, it's very easy to ignore these things that are going on around you. And we can go into our own little bubble of reading mythology and all this different thing. But it is what's around you. And like what you were saying with landscape, it, it really mm. is. Isn't it? And, then, and then you're taking it in. So you, you are being mindful of, of uh, indigenous uh, culture. You know? Yeah. I mean, my, my spirituality is very land based. Yeah, so yeah. it's like oh okay how do I make this work um yeah and sometimes I pick up a, like a sadness from the land as well that um that it's not happy because the indigenous people are being treated really badly still yeah. so um so that's one of you know one of my big things is trying to educate people about that and hopefully try and do something about it um and well. it's like what you were saying earlier about like even people who are you know, who can draw put it into their drawings people who can write and speak like you're doing these are all things and it's it's just um it's 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 like it's easy to ignore things you know what i mean but where does that yeah. go to you know? yeah yeah i mean like like i said i think um people saying i'm not political that one that's a political stance and two that is an expression of privilege um, yeah. Like oh, I can ignore politics because it doesn't affect me personally. Hmm. Yeah, well, news flash. I'm fine. It'll bite yeah. you on the bum at some point. Yeah, I, mean, I agree. COVID being a case in point, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, that is 
that is a poli uh, that is a consequence of politics for sure mm. so it is yes yeah. yeah um so yeah um how does magic play into your process of making art uh, okay magic so <clears throat> so um I got into in the 90s I got into chaos magic that was Ooh, really cool. I got very interested in that and um but you see I was always into mythology and stuff and I think my attraction to chaos magic was that it was just a mix of everything without kind of like um without a kind of a big fuck you to everything else it was just like you you you're kind of taking bits that makes it sound really crap but it's taking what what suits you and so for me, it really suited it suited me um, because uh, no, no harm. I, I didn't get into Wicca and things like that. You know, I, I have friends who are. Um, so chaos magic for me personally suited me more. And <clears throat> then I, I kind of faded. Now I, I have various chaos magic stuff tattooed on myself. But I kind of in by the I suppose maybe 2000s, I kind of started fading out of all that again and just you know different interests and then it comes back to the fore but to answer your question so chaos magic is always the one that that's very important to me and it's normally when I, I say that to people who are into kind of more of a, a kind of an Irish um, paganism whatever you want to call it um, they're always kind of surprised of like because it's like god you know you're all about mythology and all of this Irish 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 and it's like yeah but you know what i mean we've only so much information from that so the irish stuff in regards to magic and things is, is quite new too like it, you know we know things like about imbas and you know like with imbas in, in our mythology it's like okay so you're chewing the meat of a of a, of a pig or a, hmm. I, some have always also said a dog and things like this right so it's kind of like well that doesn't appeal to me you know so um i'm i'm happy with chaos magic but i i'm 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 always very open you know with friends and, and stuff of what they're doing um but anyway but back to get, answer your question with the art so yeah there are uh oh no i'm not going to point them out at all actually there are different sigils in some of my pieces um and they're all uh they start when i first started doing it, it was all like kind of very me, me, and yeah, I want this to be the best drawing. No, I'm sorry, that's kind of stupid. But you know, oh, like I hope this becomes a book, and things like that. But no, I, I try and um, kind of push out for more kind of positive stuff, you know. And again, like, I, I, like there is no sigils on that Lou one of Lou, but um, to me, like, when, when you're, you know, when you're doing things like magic, it's it's almost like, oh, again, I can only speak. Of my own experiences but it, it's kind of like it's like meditation you know you 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 focus on something and, and you're, you're putting all your energies on that so when i'm drawing all my focus and all my energy is on that and so all my intention on my drawing of we'll say okay like again to go back to lou la at the lea fall it's like all my intention was to make a comment a, a social comment on what was happening you can call that well that's just social commentary or magic but i would link it into magic if i'm honest mm. with you. Uh, because it's, a, it's all about intention like it's both. Um, it, yeah it's both it's both thank you yeah like i know uh, I, I studied herbalism like so um I'm, I'm a community herbalist um so with that um it would be when, when, when you're making things it's it's all about putting your intention into what you're making and i would see it very much the same as, as art you know so yeah, I, I would call that magic, you know. Mm. Yeah, I think, there, you know, the process of creation of something, it's like, I always think, if you know, like I do crochet. I think I mentioned that. Mm. Um, here's my crochet, uh, it's a little star. Um, and whenever I'm doing crochet for someone, I always try to put intentions into the into the stitches, right? So I think the, the intention of, um the putting the intention into the art is a magical thing and and then like that intention can be to disrupt the the assumption that that being into irish mythology is somehow right wing um 
because also you get the left kind of going oh we're not doing any of that stuff because it's really right wing it's like no we're reclaiming it from the right wing because it's <laughs> not theirs so yeah that's really important um and uh yeah so I th and, and i think you know like in living a magical life you're presumably also in touch with the sources of inspiration mm -hmm. absolutely it's um but it's like what you said earlier it's like um right wing claim everything don't they so it's kind of none of this is any of theirs like you know yeah it's not ours, like so like yeah. i really like the runes and uh yeah. um and i don't want them to be seen as a purely right wing thing because they're not um yeah. but unfortunately it's, you know somebody i thought was actually left wing turns out to to be a fellow traveler with the right and i'm like oh now now where am i going to get my sources of information about the runes so it's really um is it you really see difficult. like i i like runes as well if i'm honest um and I, um, I, I don't know too much about them. I, 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 I have more of an interest in it at home, but uh, I do like runes. And uh, it's something you, you see it and it's just, you're kind of like, uh, are they dodgy or are they okay? <laughs> and it's just like, it shouldn't be like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. They, they've, been, they've been taken so much, like, haven't they? You know, it's, it's, um, it's terrible, you know? Yeah, it is really distressing. And like the, um, uh, Presumably, uh, well, I haven't seen, and fingers crossed that they don't, uh, haven't seen any attempt at co opting the OM from the right, but. Neither have I, no. Uh, uh, I know, good. but you know how it is, yeah. Yes. Hope they yeah. don't. Um, <laughs> there's probably too much. Wood. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I like the OM too, but I find them really hard to memorize. <laughs> Whereas oh, the, yeah. Oh, gee, no, I can't memorize them at all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, I, I'm yeah. shocking. I, I used to try and, and I always remember my name through it and I've, I've completely forgotten, you know. Yeah, yeah, the runes are easier for that, definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And also there's Coilbrain, which is the Welsh um, mm -hmm. Welsh letters that correspond to the Oem but look like runes. Um, yeah. It's quite interesting. So. Absolutely. Yeah. There's, um, I got a story for you, right? <laughs> so where I am in Donegal, right, there's so Ireland, you've like the majority of home stones in the country are um, Cork, Kerry, Waterford, kind of more, more southern. And um, there are some like, I think, well, recorded. And so there's a recorded one in Tyrone. Uh, there's a recorded one in Derry. And here in Donegal, which is quite a big county, there's none. So you're kind of going, what? Like, what, what, you know, why? No, again, you could say it, it could be poverty and, and people using stone for different things. And um, uh, I'll try and tell the story very quickly. So the uh, so I started looking around, going, "Is there must be some record of Ohm?" So I found um, an article from 1913. Now I say article; it was a paragraph like that, that void, and it was about an Ohm stone that was found just down there. And you're going, yeah. "What?" Cool. So the um, I started looking, and so there was a, it said there was a I can't remember either of their names, right? But there was a, a professor from England and a professor from Japan. We're both in this area. Sorry, it just said their names and they're looking in and they said they're deciphering the ohm because they reckon it links to a treasure that's buried here by an Irish chieftain. And you're like, mm. um, so then I said it, I just did a simple Google of um of the names. And uh so the you know, again, I can't remember the names, it's not about trying to pronounce anything, it's like the 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 English person was linked to is it Jesus College in Oxford. Oh yeah. So I started checking and uh, I wrote to them, right? So I couldn't find out anything about the Japanese professor, but that they wrote loads of books with the link of they were a language scholar uh, of right. their links with kind of Japanese and English yeah. and all this stuff. Um, so then the guy. I wish I could remember the name, but the story would be more interesting. Um, the professor from England, he um, was over in the Basque country. I would imagine he's from kind of a wealthy background and he fell in love with the language and then he fell in love with kind of Celtic languages. So he came to Ireland studying Gaelic languages. So he went to Oxford because at the time they had a real focus on Celtic languages because there's the Sir John Rees or whatever who used to focus a lot on the Welsh language. So they came here to learn Gaelic. Sorry, this is the Gaelic, by the way. So it'd be very a lot of Irish would be spoken so um they found the stone and there is no record I wrote to the 
I got the archivist from the uh, Jesus College, the uh, it's Oxford College, I think, but it's just a section of it or whatever, right? yeah. the university or whatever. And uh, they were really good. And then they said, um, this professor is also linked to, um, so uh, in 1913, so in 1907, reported seeing uh, a giant 20, uh, was it a giant, was it 20 feet? No, it must have been bigger. A giant serpent, serpent with a lion's mane in Cornwall. Wow. And it, it's in Cornish um, folklore. There's something oh, okay. I wouldn't have no knowledge about, but a, a Google search, you know. And um, the, um, so this is all before kind of the real, in the 1930s, Loch Ness Monster became the big one. You yeah. Know? So um, what happened was um, the reports of the newspaper and um, the paper, uh, put in the paper and people said had seen this serpent all over the, the coast along near Cornwall and around there. And um, so, uh, but then uh, scientists or whoever came along and they said, no, no, that's an elongated fish. And they said it's a certain type of fish that they were saying, like, if you are, you know, if you have no knowledge of these type of fish, you know, you're, you, you know, you're obviously a fool, like sort of thing. And so they were shamed. And then there was all these jokes and little cartoons saying, oh. you know, and so the your man went back to the college, came over here, started in Gaelic, which is, and then he found the Ormstone. So I am on this huge search at the moment for this Ormstone. Now, wow. so I've kind of I've said to people, okay, so if you were in Homestone, where would you be? So there's an old graveyard and then there's a newer graveyard on a hill. And I'm like, I'm convinced it's, I'm convinced it's around there. And there's like behind it is just brambles and stuff. So wow. I am um, like, I mightn't find anything, but that's my search at the moment. That's my, you know, your, your, your quest or your kind of. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, that's, that's, so Om, my interest is as, I've always had a, a passing interest, but yeah, it's it's a quite a big interest. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh well, I um I had an interesting experience because the um uh I was in Cornwall and um the person I was with said, oh, uh, this place has an Oam stone. We should go look. So we did, and um we got talking to the people who own the land because uh, they have an Arthurian centre on the land, Brilliant. and uh, we end up doing an archaeological dig there uh, wow. so uh, it was really cool and they've excavated a load of a Celtic village that was there um, and it's actually in a place called Slaughter Bridge which is where King Arthur's last battle is meant to have been um, okay. and King, uh, Arthur, King Arthur is born in Cornwall as well are they uh, no? yes indeed yes at Tintagel yeah so uh, yeah oh yeah this, that's this it oh, sorry to interrupt you but what was the name you just said uh, where he was born? Oh, where, where he was born, Tintagel. That's where they saw the serpent. That's right. how I know King Martin Mar Mar was. Yeah, sorry, ah, no, sorry I continue. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, anyway, there's an organ stone um, just up the road. So wow. In, uh, um, in did you decipher what it said? Or like, did, uh, yeah, did some, it, not me personally, but like it has been deciphered and now I can't remember. Um, uh, but it's something like the, the son of, I think it's actually like the son of Arthur. This wow. stone. So, because wow. it's got like the word map on it, which, as you know, in Celtic languages means the sun of, yeah. depending on whether you're P Celtic or Q Celtic. That's fantastic. Yeah. Do you know, I've got, I've got one for you, actually. I was down in Kildare, right? Um, it's just outside of Dublin, like the capital. And uh, there is, okay, so you're, you're going along the road. It's a very narrow road. It's very hard to pull in. But you'll see there's just, it's all kind of flat farmland. And then there's, it's a mound but you'll just see really mature trees on this mound uh -huh. uh, a lot of oak and um so you try and pull in i can't remember the name um if you hang on I'll, if you search the last four druids you'll find it uh -huh. so you go along right and it's it's an old it's all it's an old graveyard but it's like it's really old it's, it's all overgrown there's briar and bramble and whatever and but as you walk up, first you're, first you're going to see all the, so you walk in, it's around a stone wall, big circle, and then there's this mound. You walk through the, the gate there, the gate's broken, and you'll just see everything's overgrown. You'll see a couple of gravestones and you walk up. But then if you really take a look and notice, it's actually a circle of standing stones, of about 20 standing stones at the, at the base of the mound. Uh, well, 
not at the very base, but just slightly up from the base. Hmm. And uh, written in Ohm on one of the stones, it actually says the last four druids. Oh, wow. Isn't that, you know, you're just like, isn't that just something like from a, you know, fancy book or a yeah. comic? Yeah. Or- Wow. And uh, no, they, they actually took that stone away. It's in the museum. But then there's another stone that another uh, stone that still sits there. And it's um, it's it looks like uh, that there's a paw imprint in it, like of a big, large dog. Oh, right? wow. And the whole thing is like that the when they were burying the king of Munster, that the that he was he was carried by, I don't know, was it bulls or something, but they all followed this big hound and then the hound printed the thing on, the, on wow. the, the paw on the standing stone and then the the last king of Munster was buried there you know wow. so the, the own stuff is fantastic like, that's isn't awesome it? You I love that yeah um it's funny you say about the the last four druids because the other day we were talking about the idea of like going back and and connecting with your last pagan ancestor and um mm. oh you know obviously we don't know the name of our last pagan ancestor but i just yeah. really like the idea of going right i'm going to connect back to that person whoever it was i've got another story for you Bon. right so i don't i know i just i end up just right so i've always been one you know where you come when we talk of ancestors and so my second name would be fitzgerald so be but oh well you must be the fitzgeralds of such and such and you know the lord and manor of whatever but i've always went well, no all my ancestors were like peasant farmers up in Kerry you know what I mean I'm I'm not full of errors and graces and it would be always like oh yeah yeah look you might think your ancestors had a castle you were probably cleaning the shite at the but anyway right and that was always I know it's very negative but it's you know that's true right yeah also like you know when people claim to have been Cleopatra in a previous life yeah Yeah, I was a peasant I was peasant. I was cleaning up after them yeah 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 Yeah. but uh, (laughs) I found out a really good one. Um, so I found this out maybe two, three years ago. I don't know. Um, so anyway, so my, my father, when he was alive, he'd, he'd always talk about um, he's uh, it would be my great, 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 great uncle. And he was a priest. And my mum, we always like kind of, geez, here he goes again, you know. And, uh, so the priest, I suppose at the time, you know, it was probably the respect, you know. Um, and, but the priests, so my great, 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 uncle his best friend was on rua or sulevon and i can remember reading this i was just like what so on rua sulevon was this um kind of like an oliver reed type you know like wild and whatever and he used to work as a spalping like the spalping would be like traveling from farm to farm and it was normally like you'd normally have like poets and people and they would just travel ah. from farm to farm you know so that would be the word spalping. Right, so, I was wondering whether, yeah, because I only know. Yeah, so like, you have a lot of oh, songs with spalping. Yes. Yeah, spalping fauna and things. So <laughs> yes. Onrua was, um, they say he had the last, no, druid school or bardic school in ah. the country. Now, you could kind of go, oh, well, you know, that's whatever. Um, so it, it was, it, so he, he was uh, uh, from Kerry and um, it was a certain type of Irish poetry that I can't remember the name of no, right? There was a style to it. Um, so uh, everything was done in Irish, but again, this was the time where you would have to, to hide it, you know? So again, according to the thing was that it was the last Bardic run school. So it was like oh, wow. a style of teaching of Bardic. I, I Like you couldn't say, oh, they're all Druids. You know, it was just a Bardic teaching. Mm. So um, what happened was I was looking through the National Folklore Archive and there's a quote from a great, great, well, it was about three grades anyway, Uncle Ned. And he said, um, his quote at the time was said, um, so he was good friends with uh, Onru O'Sullivan. And he said, um, Onru O'Sullivan is more, impo- is, his death is more important than the death of three priests. For being a priest, you just train, whereas Onru had all this information that will now be forgotten. And then Onru O'Sullivan gave all his last work to my uncle, to my oh, great, wow. great, great, great uncle. And no, I haven't a clue where they're all gone, but to have some of that information would be incredible, you know? Yeah. Um, but no, when I tell that story, it's like, yeah, you know, I'm so great. But no, all my background is like peasant farmers from, you know, middle of nowhere in Kerry. But it is, it's like sometimes the stuff you find out, you know, and when you're saying, when you're kind of, if we could link back to some of our ancestors, it's like, 
who knows, you know, and it's like, it's, it's the peasants who had that information. Yes. It didn't have to be any some sort of lord manor of some place. It's like, it's the peasants were the ones, certainly, look, I can only talk about Ireland, but it's the peasants were like, they were the ones who had a lot of our herbal knowledge, our yeah. folklore, our mythology, and they're the ones w w that we should be proud of, you know what I mean? Oh, um, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I am, um, it's really interesting reading some of the traditional witchcraft books that have been published recently like there's a whole uh, I read the one for Norfolk which is called the devil's plantation um by Nigel Pearson and he talks about like the whole magical law that was known to farming and peasant folk in Norfolk so Brilliant. Wow. it's very true would you recommend the book uh, yes I do it's good yeah um <clears throat> and also Troy books have been doing a lot of work in that area as well so Mm. Um, have you yeah. seen the um the group that they're an organization in scotland um remembering accused witches oh yes yeah that's um, good as well i yeah. went to like a zoom talk they had online and it was fascinating like it was just like the amount of people murdered in yeah. scotland is just horrific they, they gave a figure like you know no, we had it in ireland but not like not even, even nearly even half as bad as scotland mm. Uh, was it 800? I, I, I bet you know I have the figure all wrong. Now, but it, yes, it was, I know it was, there's a database of, of all the names online because they've got pretty good records of... Yeah. Of oh, listen to the stories, like, it was just yeah. shocking. Yeah. Well, also in Scotland, uh, witches were burnt for heresy rather than... Whereas in England, they were hang, <coughs> hanged as a felony. So at least a slightly quicker way to go. Um, but yeah, because Scotland was under a different type of ecclesiastical law. So, yeah. yeah yeah but yeah it's i mean it's important to connect back to these things and and like not to kind of pretend that the past was somehow idyllic uh because it clearly wasn't Absolutely. yeah like i'm currently reading um black and british by david olasoga uh okay. which is about the well the history of black people in britain and the commonwealth uh from roman times to the present and I'm currently on the bit about the slave trade and it's like even though I knew I thought I knew a lot of stuff about that it's like oh okay there's tons of stuff I didn't know because you know yeah um so yeah good read um oh. but yeah it's just so important to like to really understand history instead of picking and choosing little bits that that we think look pretty um yeah. like, um so yeah understand your history so and you really you you know your roots which is good um yeah and then like real history which includes black people and queer people and um other marginalized groups you know which is why yeah. I think your, your work is super important so. oh no uh, thank you thank you um i uh i really appreciate that and i really appreciate getting this into you too you know um it's kind of like uh Sometimes I feel like, oh, geez, I'm probably repeating everything I, I said, but I'm saying it to friends and people I know. And it's like, so it's, it's nice to be able to say it. And it's like, you know, the, and that you're kind of going, yeah, and I, you, you get some, and get such positive feedback. Like, you know, yeah. it's, it's fantastic. It really is. You know? yeah. Well, uh, you know, I think it's really valuable. And I think that, you know, I think your work is beautiful and um, look forward to seeing more of it. And, and uh, like, obviously, let me know when your book comes out and I will. You know we can talk oh, about that nice. as well and um well I'll certainly publicize it on my instagram and okay. anywhere else that i can because mm -hmm. um sounds great and like you know just i love everything you're doing and i think it's brilliant so, nice. can i ask you a question then since sure. uh, rather than me being the one kind of like going, yeah this is my work and i'm gonna show off <laughs> um so tell me um how, how did you get into paganism uh, yeah, good question. So I, I was about, um, I was about 15 and I, um, I realized that like I was a Christian at the time and I was having several, I was having doubts on several fronts. And actually the biggest thing was that my best friend came out to me as gay. Um, and all the Christians I knew were like, oh no, God won't like that. Um, and, uh, and it's like, I'd known him since he was five. So mm. it was very clear that, you know, he was, and it was very obvious even when he was five, right? And um, 
and then I started exploring my own sexuality as well and and so I realized that what I wanted was a religion that was positive and affirming about sexuality in all its forms um so then I discovered paganism through reading Puck of Pook's Hill by Rudyard Kipling um and and I I kind of well actually what it was I'd, I'd kind of put together my personal philosophy and worldview and everything um and then I was like okay now I, I don't know what the name for this is and then I read Puck of Pook's Hill and went ah pagan that's the name for what I'm feeling um so it's kind of that way around and and when I first became a pagan I thought I you know this is well pre the internet so mm. I thought I was the only one I mean I'd heard rumors about Thor worshippers in Iceland but that was about it um <laughs> and uh anyway so yeah and then i discovered other pagans which was great um and then the reason because my introduction to paganism in a way was my well my the thing that sparked me onto that path uh was my best friend coming out as gay um it was really important to me that paganism be lgbtqia affirming yeah um, and that's where the whole inclusive wicker thing came in um i mean i'm bisexual as well so uh, obviously and non-binary so that came into it too but um it was just really really important to me that Wiccan and and paganism not repeat all the, the heterocentric patriarchal bullshit that Christianity has been pushing on us for the last uh, 2,000 years so um and so that's why I'm really really passionate about LGBT inclusion in paganism um okay. And, and also I think I've always, I just, I remember as a child going to burial mounds and hills and and woods and trees and going, you know, really feeling connected to the land. So, and that's the yeah. land-based component of my spirituality. Oh, I really like that. I'm glad I asked the question. Yeah. The, um, I, I also like um, what you said about connecting with the land and it's almost like, well, sorry, from when you were a child, and it's almost like re rekindling that, isn't it? Like almost that that kind of yeah. like, you know. And um, I do think you now this is just my opinion. Okay, I could be wrong, but I do think the influence. And I, I can only talk on more of a an Irish side of things. I think we are getting very influenced by outside stuff, like uh, certainly Canada, um, like yourself. There's uh, Ermid's Almanac, the podcast. There's obviously loads of others who are doing a more of um, uh, like sort of a queer positive, this this um, acceptance that that I think Irish people are kind of going, yeah, this is the way it should, or this is the way it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, um, because uh, like we all kind of go on of like, oh, you know, it has to be staying here and all this sort of stuff. And it's like, but like, we're all learning from each other, aren't we? Like, you know, it's, 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 it's all a really good thing. Like, you know, mm. um, yeah, and, and I again. love the idea of, you know, grounding that in Irish mythology too, because, like, yeah. I mean, uh, Cúchelain and Ferdia, um, mm. they, they were very close friends. They were so close, they slept together. Right, there you go, I rest my case. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, That's it. And let's face it, the, you know, the ancient Celts were not, were not homophobic, as far as I know. Um, well, you know, the thing is, is like people are always saying, well, you know, you see, the, where, where's the proof? There were human beings. There is the proof. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, do we have, does, does it have to be written down here? Like, you know, this stuff was written by monks. You know what I mean? So it's a case of like, you know what I mean? They're going to be putting their point of view in all of this. Like, so it's yeah. kind of, you know, like the, the proof is they're human. It's as simple yeah. as that. Yeah. And the thing is, I think, you know, like uh, I know um, lesbian Christians, for instance, really like, the whole story of Ruth and Naomi, um, mm. and it's like it the Ruth and Naomi is a great model for love between women. So you you don't need them to have literally been in a same sex relationship for it to be a really positive model for that thing. And the yeah. same goes for for uh, Cuchulain and Ferdia. So um, you know, myth mythology can be seen through many different lenses, and that's fine. Um, yeah, of course. Yeah, the fact they slept together is a bit of a smoking gun, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and this is it. It's like um, I, um, yeah, I won't direct any sites, but it's like 
I've seen stuff written about that and people just losing it. Like, you know, how dare you say Cucullin? Because Cucullin's are like, he's like our whatever. National hero kind of thing, yeah. He's our John Wayne, for want of a better <laughs> example. That was a really bad example. But it, it's, um, but but they are like, and it's kind of like, that's why it's like, well, tough. Yeah, <laughs> you know? that, that yeah. looks that way to me. Um, yeah, me too. Yeah, and, and why not? Like, you know, why can't you be like this idea that, that to be manly you have to be heterosexual like no yeah yeah absolutely absolutely so um, yeah like going I, back to um right. yeah the oh, jeepers i i feel like i'm plugging it but you know something it's, plugging it's, is good plugging is encouraged well i i don't think i even have it on sale on my page anymore but this drawing all of those comments was i find people you know they project their own issues yeah and um so all I had in that was what I told you earlier of just like, look, this is a reaction to what's happening on Tower Hill and people pushing their own politics. And that, that was it. And I didn't say, I didn't use the word gay or didn't use the word whatever. Like, and there was someone going, um, the, what was it? Some of the comments, you know, because you, you remember them because you're going, what? I didn't even say anything. So it was like, uh, it was like, fuck you and your pronouns and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I didn't mention anything about pronouns. And there was another comment that was like, you're just afraid of um, of of men who are more masculine than you. And you're just like, there's all these projections coming out. And you're like, going, wow, you know, I think I think you the should really think about this. Is, the internalized homophobia is strong in this one. <laughs> is that, it's it's just, yeah, like, like some of them, like, so like, don't get me wrong. Some of that, it's funny. Like some of the stuff wasn't so funny, um, but you know what I mean? You're just like. I think, you know, well, then you projecting that at me, you should really question because this is on your mind. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? It's just, yeah, it's just, I don't know, it comes out in different ways, maybe. Don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely think there's a lot of projection going on there. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's a wonderful image and I love it and it's great. And uh, really appreciate you joining us today. So thank you so and, much. And great. Thank you so much. It's brilliant. It awesome. Yeah. And uh, we'll keep an eye out for the book. Oh, cheers. It won't be for a while. I still have my own. I don't even have it to hand. I still have my book, my current book. Um, ah, yes, got to see that. Sorry, the, the last close here. Um, so this one is like uh, 10 years of work. Wow. So it's the last battle of Moitura. That's the Morrigan oh, in the front. It. Actually, going back to sexiness things, right? So the Morrigan is normally that sexy thing. So here I've tried my best to draw a, a middle-aged woman. Yeah. And I didn't want to draw the glory of battle and that kind of, you know, right, we're going to, we're the winners. So it's the after it's the aftermath of Moitura. So Hi. there yeah. is Lou on the horse, like the one you oh, saw yeah. earlier, but it's more of a shadow. And it's just the, the aftermath of war that there's nothing heroic about it. Like, and yeah. it's just, so this is the Morrigan in Irish mythology. She, she starts um, prophesizing you know the end of the world and how things would be and so that is her and very much i wanted kind of more of a ritual type thing yeah. and then i've cut it on a very faint i don't know there's a shield and a gig on that skull there very oh, very yeah. Faint. Ah. <laughs> yeah so um again so that's the book and look it's, it's just a very very i don't know very heavy heavy illustrated book wait a minute wow. you're seeing all the text from that side wait a second i love it so yeah very he heavy illustrated so it's like 10 years of stuff of but it's really, it's kind of like the story of Lou and it's linked in with here, going down to Snook and around the country. Right. So I should plug that because you this should. is the second edition and I'm publishing it now myself. It used to be published by the Hilatara Press. There wasn't a falling out or anything. Courtney Davis is a, a great artist and he published it originally. And then he did something that's unheard of. He gave me all the publishing back, which was fantastic. You know? Great. Yeah. 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 Uh, I love Courtney Davis. End of plug. plug. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Hooray! <laughs> More plugs. We need plugs. plugs are good. Thanks, everyone. Uh, and uh, yeah, you can send me some links to put in the um, in the comments afterwards as well. Great. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Uh, thanks again. It's been brilliant. <laughs>